time people listen episode 71 i'm popping out with my man b smith delaware state's own hey <laughs> hornets <laughs> kofi on power now all right executive coach leadership development um over there at the empower circle down in atlanta georgia so listen yes, so I'm on right now so i had to highlight my man bring him on but the main thing is April 5th, he got his um his first empowerment call, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But before we get into all that, my main man, real Eagles fan. Anytime I bring an Eagles fan on here, we, we, we got to chop it up. All right. So, first of all, let, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. <laughs> you, you a real one, though. I'm, I'm going to say you a real one. Because I remember, you know, it became cool to, to protest the NFL and all that when Kaepernick went down, right? Right, right. But I remember when you wasn't feeling Chip Kelly. Right. I remember you wasn't feeling Chip Kelly, and you was like, man, I'm done with the Eagles. <laughs> Facts. Let the Eagles get rid of Chip Kelly, I'm done with them. Now, in my mind, I'm with you, but I'm thinking like, man, listen, Andy Reid was just here 15 years, <laughs> Chip will <laughs> be here at least 10. I'm not giving up on my Eagles. But you kept it real. But before I get to that, before I get to that, let me, let me take a step back. Before I get to that, I always want to start the podcast off on a positive note. Mm-hmm. For you, my topic is going to be Chip Kelly. Give me something positive about Chip Kelly. I have absolutely nothing positive to say about Chip Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> that he came in and, and destroyed everything and we still feeling the repercussions from Chip Kelly is what I feel. I have absolutely nothing positive to say about Chip Kelly. Man. Absolutely nothing. I'm one of the most positive people to speak about. <laughs> Not that when he was here, the team was healthy? Nah, nothing. Not even that? No. He drafted Lane Johnson, Ertz, none No, of that. All no. Right, move on, move on. I, I ain't going for it. I have nothing, nothing positive to say about Chip Kelly. All right, so let's <laughs> do it. Because I talked about a couple episodes ago, and uh, I was actually on the news yesterday with my Eagles sweatshirt inside out. I'm not feeling the team right now. Not on a political level, mm. but just, like, I'm not feeling how unorganized this organization is. I'm not really proud of the Eagles fan right now. To go from Super Bowl champions to back in the basement, I'm not really feeling the team. But people are tired of hearing me talk about it. How, how do you feel about the state of the franchise at this moment? All right, so I'm going to start at Chip Kelly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start right at Chip Kelly with this one. So oh, what I, what, this is what this is what I feel. I feel as though the organization has always allowed the head coach, basically, which, which was Andy Reid, mm-hmm. to be a part of decision making. Mm-hmm. They decided to leave that same authority to Chip Kelly, as it relates to decision making. Right. Chip Kelly destroyed the team with that decision, with the power of that decision, right? So he had the opportunity to do that, destroyed everything, and now we're playing leave the coach out of it right now the coach doesn't have the authority anymore now we want the soft coaches the coach is going to go along with we need to go along with and we had this non-football gm person has had probably, probably never played it down to football you feel what i'm saying so now he has to make the decisions and we, we we took the rope away from the head coach and made them the puppet now all because of what chip kelly destroyed that right. he destroyed that opportunity Right. So now it's like if I'm looking at it from a GM and I'm looking at it from a leadership perspective, I'm like, we can no longer allow the coach to have that much authority ever again. Ever, ever. Ever. Even if I win the Super Bowl, ever, ever. Ever. Doesn't even matter. Can never get that authority ever again after what Chip Kelly did to us. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like, get rid of the head coach. You got rid of the quarterback. You got rid of these individuals that, that wanted to, they had, they had stuff to say, right? They was at the forefront, whether it was on the media or behind the scenes, they had things to say. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, we hire another sucker. We hire another coach that's going to be a puppet, and it's his first time being a head coach. So, of course, he's going to go along with whatever he needs to go along with. So now I think the the, 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 the spotlight is on Howard because mm-hmm. there's no more blame. There's no more scapegoats, right? Like the scapegoat was Doug. The scapegoat was Wentz. Now it's like you're at the front center, and I think his job is on the line. At this point, I think if something fails after these next two years, how are we getting cut? You think so? Yeah. I, I kind of believe that this dude got like infinity lives. Like I feel like I don't know what type of relationship him and Lori got, but he, he got it. Cause I feel like even if, um, so, so for example, we moved from six to 12 and I'm, I want to get mm-hmm. your opinion on that in a second, but I kind of feel like all of this resets his time clock because it takes so long to rebuild. I say three, four years that he can always say it. Well, he's got three, four, four years, especially if you draft a new quarterback, you don't feel that way. No, I feel like if he fell in the next two years, see the, the, the Eagles organization got, a pass be due to COVID. Mm-hmm. I feel like if Eagles fans was in the building, it would be rough, very rough on the ownership of the Philadelphia Eagles. But because we are out of COVID or we will be pushing out of COVID soon, hopefully, mm-hmm. 
God willing, that once the fans come back in, we're not going to no losing records again. Like the signs is going to get crazy. The, the, the language is going to get crazy. <laughs> the beer is thrown at the coach coming out the tunnel going to get crazy. You know what I'm saying? So at this point, I feel like after these decisions made, there's no more fingers to be pointed at. Point one finger, three fingers pointing back at you at this point. I'm, I'm with you on that. So how do you feel about them moving back from uh from six to what was it from from six to twelve? I almost uh I almost unfollow my Philadelphia Eagles fan group, and I still don't understand it. I still don't get it. Um, we literally. I feel like we lost that game on purpose to get that six. We could have just won the game and been at 12. <laughs> so I'm lost. And I hope that there is some type of trickery that's happening, something that my intelligence, you know, can't pick up. So yeah. right now I, I have no idea. Exactly. You have no idea. And that's exactly why when people ask me, how come my, my sweatshirt is inside out? How come I'm going? <laughs> Bro, we have no direction. Like we're literally, just, it seems like we're just doing whatever, whatever. But I guess one of the positive things is now that we have three first round picks, would you take Deshaun Watson with the three first round picks? Like, do you hope that? Do you hope that's the plan? That's the only kind of like logic. I will. You would take that. I will. You get some a talent like that, you can't let go. As much as I I believe in hurts, mm -hmm. I do believe in hurts. I do think if Deshaun Watson with three picks and we got that, yes, most definitely. So you you, you, you take that. Yeah. Right, Hands so down. Where we stand at now. At, at 12, what would you do in the draft? I know we connected on Clubhouse a couple weeks ago, and you was like, man, what all these? First of all, you took over the Clubhouse. My man got in there. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you basically was like, man, listen, with all these holes we got to fill, it don't matter who we pick. Let's pick the best player. Facts. We was at six, and we, we basically could have picked the best non-quarterback out of everybody. Right. Now that we're at 12, what do you think they should go at, at 12? Or it still don't matter. Whatever's available? I still think we need – I say whatever's a, what the best talent available, but I still think we need a dominant receiver. Well, at 12, you would take a receiver at 12? Because now they're saying Devontae might actually be available at 12. Not Chase. Chase will probably be gone. He'll probably go to Cincinnati. Devontae available at 12, I'm taking Devontae. Okay. So you, you, Hands down. So we need that weapon first. Yeah, we I, we done picked up, what, two safeties now? Free agency? Yeah, yeah. All right, that's Okay. Right, that's cool. So now, like, all right, let me get my, my number one receiver. All right, I mean, I'm with you. I can, I can definitely respect that, but I'm with you. It seems like we're on the same page about it, where it's like, listen, th this team is out of pocket, man. We, we, I just want to see us going into the right direction, make other moves make sense, like make it look like there's some type of progression, cohesion, <laughs> progression all in the front office, because we just so wishy washy all over the place. And really, for me, it started, I know you took it back to Chip Kelly. For me, it started mm -hmm. with that Washington Redskins game when, when Doug. And the players didn't know what the hell to do. And, and it seemed like they, they texted us. It like, was trash, bro. The game. Then the next Monday morning, we look, we look like a terrible franchise. You got Doug on every channel, looking confused. So, and at that at that day, that's when I was like, man, I'm done with these dudes. But even at, at, after that point, everything has, has been downhill. So my last question before I get you out of here, what would you expect from the Eagles this year, record-wise? What would you be happy with? 500. 500. At least 500, man. Anything less than 500, I don't care what happened, what's the issue. Eagles fans not trying to hear it. Exactly, because I mean, we're pretty much the same age. And we're right. not being trash, trash. We're not right. Used to, outside of the, of the dream team year and, and last year, we're not used to three, four. Like, we, we're not used to that. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I always believe at the end of the day, we can always win a division. And I'm with you, 500. And I would like to see Hurts look good. I, I right. Wanna, I want to see Miles. They said he never got 20 carries. I want to see a speed Miles, see if he can be a workhorse back. Mm -hmm. Believe it, and then we can go from there. Right. At least give me over. At least, matter of fact, give me give me a game over five hundred. That's what I need. And I think that especially in this division, even though everybody got better except us. Right. Clearly. <laughs> I, I still I still think um, I'm with you, bro. I, I don't expect to be no three four one team, and that ain't gonna cut it here here in, in the city, man. That, that that ain't gonna work here. All right, but listen, let, let's transition. We don't get into this. This, this is what you also known for outside of the football talk. We gotta get into the black love. <laughs> my boy said this is what i'm known for <laughs> on facebook on, on social media in general i'll be people to post i'll be people to throw up i'm all about the engagement you feel me like mm -hmm. if you get 40 50 comments you must be doing something right so i'll be watching how you move I be this stuff you post. I'm, like, I'm like this dude this, i mean you got it though. that's what it's about you feel me so <laughs> i'm gonna start right here last weekend right uh when you popped out with your 
well, wherever you guys stand, we can get to that later. Did you expect that type of reaction from, from the people? We're going to call them the people. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm going to say, yeah. Oh, so you knew what it was? I'm gonna be, yeah, I knew. Um, because I didn't tell anybody. I probably only told about two, three people. Maybe like four or five close people. But as far as anything else, I didn't tell anybody. I knew once I post a picture, the reaction was going to come. All right, so let me back it up for people that may not follow you or, or follow the situation. So basically, you, you were in a public situation. I mean, a, a very- Was. I'm sorry, you, you, you was in a very public relationship, right? Uh -huh. And um, me personally, that's something I've always frowned upon because I'm scared mm -hmm. of the outside. I'm scared of the hate. I'm scared of the, the extraness. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, by you not even being in that relationship no more, would you still keep it public or would- No, forward? so a lot of the reason why we were public, one, we, we, definitely, we definitely had the puppy love, definitely had the high school love. But on top of all of those things, we also was going to business together. Okay. So we were going to do a YouTube show. You feel what I'm saying? Cole and Kofi. We were going to do um, a business. I'm not going to speak on the business name because we probably still do that business. But, we, you know, we just had a whole business where we were promoting love. Black love initially, but definitely love in general. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we were more public and just the relationship was more on a public platform in preparation for launching our business. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Definitely, if you mm -hmm. monetize, I mean, you definitely had the support. Indeed. And shit, even if y'all ain't together, y'all might as well act like y'all together. <laughs> <laughs> you say, even if y'all ain't together, act like y'all together. <laughs> <laughs> they, they definitely was rocking with you. Where? So, so my question to you, I mean, you can actually help me out with this because I was a learner. Mm -hmm. That didn't work out. So when, when two people, whether it's in the public or not, at the long term, not even a long term relationship, at the relationship, what do you recommend people should do should they, should, they, should they jump right back into a relationship? Should they just act like it never happened? Like, what were the things you did? I mean, after, after, you, after, the, after the relationship was over? Yeah. Oh, number one thing I was doing was healing. I think that's the number one. I think if anybody get out, I think the number one is healing. This is just my personal opinion. Everybody do things differently. But me personally, my whole mindset was about healing, facing the hurt head on. You feel what I'm saying? Do what I need to do head on. And that's... I, that's from small as listening to the music that we used to listen to. You feel what I'm saying? Our favorite slow jams, all of that. Like not deflecting, just literally going head on, taking my time to really heal, think, process, get myself, think about ways that I can improve myself. You know what I mean? Hold myself accountable for the things that I've done in the relationship that may have caused, you know what I mean, the, the ending. So once that self-accountability took place, I can no longer play the victim role and it's just about getting my stuff and my internal things together. You feel what I'm saying? So I, that's my suggestion for me personally. No, no, no that's real. And because uh, people laugh about it. I've actually talked about it on my show before, but because I joke around so much, people always think everything I say is a joke. But I gotta say 80% of my jokes be real rap. So mm -hmm. when I got out of my situation, like I went to therapy. You feel Facts. me? Like, I got really pulled up, sat on the couch. You feel me? And it was actually a suggestion from my sister who, uh, I, I mean, she just go because she like to go, I think. Mm -hmm. So she told me to go, I went. So when the lady asked me, like, what, what are you here for? I was like, uh, my sister told me to come. It's like, what do you want to work on? It's, it's almost like a job interview when they ask you, like, what's your weakness? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what are you working on? I'm like, uh, nothing. I'm just here. <laughs> I'm just here to talk. You know, I don't mind talking to you. So, but but after that, and she was like, well, well let's get into it. Like, where are you at right now? And I started talking about my life and where I'm at. She's like, well, let's start with um this relationship. So we got into a relationship. And then when I start giving her the details of my relationship, she's like, well, maybe we should start with human decency. So, <laughs> I'm laughing, but it was real. Like, home, right. I went to a woman, like homegirl was real. So we got into the human decency uh, aspect of the situation. I, and, and that's when I began to be able to see where I was wrong at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even in my relationship, when I said I was wrong, I mean, I, I seen where I was wrong, I, I can just say I was wrong. But it was like when I went to therapy, I was able to find a root and, and like the cause, like, like th therapy was real. Word up. So when people ask me what did I did when I got out of my situation, I was like, yeah, I went to therapy. And I had to figure I, out, I mean, I'm not, I'm not even trying to sound crazy, but I had to figure out, how, I mean, I'm like leaving me, like, you know what I'm saying? So right. <laughs> I had to get in there and figure out how you leave a nigga like me. <laughs> <laughs> Word up, though. Boy, I was in the same boat. I'm like, me? Yeah. Nah, that's pride of ego got to kick in. You got to click in on this one. Yo, yo, mm -hmm. and for real, like, I, I went for like um, a little over a year about that situation. You feel me? Then, I, you know, then we had to, after I got to a certain point, I mean, me and the therapist wasn't seeing eye to eye no more, but at least with that situation. He said me and the therapist wasn't seeing eye to eye no more. Fire. I had a fire <laughs> 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 I 
like, my man, see, you encourage me. Yeah. No, really, yeah. I feel like I got to get a whole story. But, I mean, and you might understand this. I mean, especially about you being mm-hmm. a leadership role and a coach. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you give me homework and give me things to work on, if I agree, it's easy. You feel me? Like, if you're coaching me up and I agree and I can apply these things, then it worked. But when her and I got to a situation where I'm like, nah, that ain't it. Like, I, I ain't feeling that. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Right. And she was like, well, and I was like, well, Oh, she didn't have the tools to continue to influence you and make you see where it could be effective. I mean, I just didn't believe in what she was telling me to believe. I mean, you know, I, I mean, you say rocket science. I can, I can kind of get into it. So, so basically, where she at, where she was at, what it was, um, when it comes to like showing your emotions and mm-hmm. all that stuff, I just wasn't feeling it. And I, I mean, I can tell you, and I can tell y'all, and the people y'all can always get get back at me and tell me where y'all stand on it. Is like, especially, I mean, us being black men, we got mm-hmm. business. You feel me? Listen, I'm all for crying, getting it out, blase, blase, blase. But at the end of the day, you got to be able to car- pick, this is a, uh, car- uh, compartmentalize. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Get straight to, to the business. I mean, me crying and suffering and rolling over and not even about the relationship. It's about, you know I mean, life things, period. I feel like it wasn't going to get me anywhere. And I, I was explaining to her, and this is exactly what I said to her. I said, I, I don't see the value. I don't see the value in me communicating these things, researching these things, expressing these things. When at the end of the day, I got to just keep living. I got to keep Mm-hmm. I'm like, what's the point of that? She was like, then you'll be being a human being. I was like, well, bitch, I'm a robot. And I ain't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so the stuff she's trying to get me to do because I wasn't feeling it, that, that's pretty much where we came um, where we came to end that. But as far as relationship and everything else, 100%, she, she, she was on the being. Like, she really knew what she was talking about. She helped me through right. that. Thing. That's what's up. I definitely think expression is important, though. I, I think expression helps you to relieve the, to pull the root. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? I, I don't think it's like a situation where you got to cry and boo-hoo over, but to like to thoroughly and emotionally express it, I do think it helps remove the root of whatever that issue is. Because when we're not, we stuffing it and we're shoving it back into our conscious or subconscious again, and it's still weighing on how we make our decisions or not based on it, because we haven't truly sat in that moment and expressed it. So I do think she had a point here and there. So I don't know. Maybe you can revisit that, John. <laughs> I'm a higher man. I don't know. I mean, I, I, her telling me I, I wasn't really feeling it. But I feel you. I, I definitely. I mean, even even you saying that, I mean, it makes more sense. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, at, at the time, I'm like, listen, baby girl, I, I ain't got time for that. I got to keep. You mean doing? You know what, what I got to do? All right. right. So, so moving forward, so, I, I know you said you're not in your relationship no more. Do you still got the? No, list? I am. So that's I did want to tell you that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I am. So the thing is, because I, I I thought you were going there, like you're not in your relationship no more. I wasn't. So we were, we were broken up for a couple months, like about five months actually. And me doing my healing process, and, and not even just all healing, but me dealing with the things that I needed to deal with as well and be accountable for. On the flip side of that, she was doing the same. So like when we reconnected, we was like almost reconnecting to two new people. You feel what I'm saying? So we was able to take the dope things from the past. And the things that wasn't so good with our connection, we fixed without even telling each other to fix it. You feel what I'm saying? So when we had our conversation, that's what brought us back together due to the fact that when she spoke about her changes through her healing, and I spoke about through my changes through mine, it was almost like what I wanted back, what we both wanted out of the dating world, we found in ourselves again. Right. So that reconnection was dope. So we reconnected, and that was my first time dropping a picture on Facebook. Just oh, so, so y'all, y'all been back a little minute though. Yeah, well, not really a little minute. Probably about a week and a half, two weeks prior. Well, listen, let me ask you this: I ain't trying to get you in no trouble. I don't know who over there with you. All right. So, so how was You're the day out there in Atlanta, brother? The day in Atlanta? Yeah, yeah. What it look trash, like? Trash, man. It's trash, it's... bro. It's really? trash. Yeah, it's trash. What? It yeah, like... man. It's no. trash. It looked like trash. No, it's trash. It looked like trash. You so know? let me tell you. All right, let, let me rephrase. It all depends on the intent of what you out there dating for. All right. It's a lot of people date. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people date to get the buns. You know what I mean? Some people date to get a team. You know what I mean? Get a good team. A right. roster. You know, you feel what I'm saying? Some people date to just have some fun here and there. You know what I mean? Get out, enjoy themselves. Right. Some people date with intentions, you know what I mean? To find what they're looking for. You know what I mean? So when you out dating, your, your scope is very narrow because you know what you're looking for or you know what you're not looking for. Let me say that. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, you never know what you automatically look for until that person come and may show you something completely different than what you initially had in mind. So let me say, I know what I'm not looking for. 
And what I'm not looking for is a lot of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. The reality show Jones, looking Jones, the fake body Jones, and I'm not saying anything against any of it. I'm just saying that I'm not into that world. Right, right. The, the, the nightlife, like I'm not into that world. I'm looking for something different. You feel what I'm saying? So what I'm looking forward for is my, you know, what I wanted, it's hard to find in the normal city of Atlanta because what the city represents. Right, right. You gotta go very detailed on what events <laughs> you need to attend to, to find, you know what I mean? The type of woman that I'm attracted to. That's, that's what's up. So let me ask you this. So what, what advice would you give for the young brothers out there dating Atlanta? I mean, I guess you kind of already gave it. Know what you're looking for? You gotta know what you're looking for. Know what you're not looking for. Know what you're not looking for. Because the pool is so big. You feel what I'm saying? So when the dating pool is so big, you get so many different personalities, and especially from a man perspective, you end up it end up being a whole different line item in your budget. You're spending these monies, you feel what I'm saying? You're spending all of these dollars on all of these dates to find out this person is nowhere near the person for you. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's definitely intentional to have those conversations prior to dating. So you know your non-negotiables. That's one. Know your non-negotiables when you're out of the dating world. Two know what you don't want so you don't got to spend time or money or re or energy on what you don't want. You feel what I'm saying? And be true to what you want as well because the drought is going to come once you narrow it down. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Well, let me ask you this. After, after being in a relationship, right, hopping back mm -hmm. in the dating world and getting back into your relationship, were you able to appreciate what you had a little bit more, even her as a person, just because you know the streets is, is crazy out there? Yeah, so the thing is, I didn't really tap into the dating world a lot when I was on my my um my hiatus after my relationship. Okay. I focused on the things I needed to focus on before I got back in the dating world, like my business, my health. You feel what I'm saying? I didn't want to get back into a new relationship saying what I'm trying to do, what I am. You know what I mean? This is what I do. Mm -hmm. I am an author. I am a speaker. I am a consultant. I am a coach. Right? Like, I didn't want to deal with anybody else's energies while I was building my business. So I focus completely on all of those things holistically and uh, again, on the entrepreneurship journey. So I didn't really get in it, um, but as it relates to appreciating, absolutely, man, like the compatibility that her and I have is like, I personally don't, and I told her this personally, I don't feel like I'm gonna get that out in the world. So the things that we, you know, aren't strong in is worth us putting energy there to be strong there because there's so many other elements to us where we compatible as small as our mindset to our mindset as it relates to just social issues, movies, like the basic things to food to, you know what I mean? The, the external things all the way down to the internal things. You feel what I'm saying? So with that being said, I'm like, nah, I'm not going to find too many like this one. Let me go ahead and make this thing work. Right. Like, and then I don't have a lot of experience in making things work because the last time I can remember being in something, I was cold. You feel what I'm saying? Like, as a grown man in my late twenties, thirties, I haven't been in no real relationship. So everything prior to that, it was like, psh, it, you know, I was on my B Smith. You feel what I'm saying? So <laughs> that was on my B Smith. It was a little different there. So I don't really have too much experience on challenging myself to make things work and being able to check myself internally. You know what I mean? And, and provide more safety emotional safety and space and patience for the woman. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what I was been focusing on for myself. And it's been working so far. No, no, no that's real. That's real. That's real. Mm -hmm. I'm going to with you for a little minute. You know, I, I've been out here a little bit running the streets, surveying the streets. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to lie. I'll be thinking the same thing. I'm like, damn, like, it, it definitely makes you look back and, and appreciate the smaller things and certain little things that's, that's hard to find out here. Because at the end of the day, it's the reason why you was in the relationship, you know what I mean, with that person. Right. But you, you did the right thing. Like you said, you focus on your business. Um, you focus on accomplishing other things you want to accomplish and, and staying mm -hmm. focused, which brings us to the Empower Call, right? You got the right. Empower Call going down April 5th, um, the Empower Circle. So, so let's start there. What exactly is the Empower Circle? All right. So Empower Circle is a... <clears throat> so let me rewind a little bit and how I got to that. So I've been in leadership roles basically ever since I graduated college. Like every full-time position I have, I was leading and I was supervising staff. Um, even when I didn't know how to supervise staff, at the, you know what I mean? I was still in that supervisor position. Um, so this last position that I've had with the city of Decatur, 
I was basically in a training and facilitating and onboarding, hiring, firing, you know what I mean? Performance plans, all of that type of stuff. So <clears throat> I realized using that in business, a lot of entrepreneurs don't have that perspective. They don't have the, the structure of leadership and organization. And I was like, you know what? This is a niche. This is something that I can use as a coaching consultant for all business owners, whether a small business or a business that's already been going for 10, 15, 20 years, right? Like it's just things change and you got to keep up with the, uh, the Joneses. So Empower Circle was a coaching organ is coaching, which is empowerment coaching and executive coaching. Empowerment coaching is like a, a combination of life coaching and professional development coaching. Okay. I, I didn't want to focus primarily on life coaching because life coaching kinds of, it, it, it kinds of, it's a blurred vision sometimes with therapy and counseling. And I don't want to do therapy and counseling, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> I want to stay within professional development. Like you're coming because you're trying to grow with your goals, uh, not because of your relationship issues. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't want to get in that realm. So it was more so goals and it helped you stay there and applying different goals and, and different methods and things for you to focus on you and stay on that tunnel vision and accomplish the goals that we set and hold you accountable as well. So that's the coaching part. And then the consultant part is like the leadership development training. Like I will go into organizations and see, you know, assess the issue and whatever their issue is, whether if it's, they have a toxic environment um, they don't know how to utilize all of their personalities to, to make a cohesive team, you know what I'm saying, to achieve their goals, I will come in and start creating leadership trainings based around that, right? So now, of course, it's COVID, so a lot of things will be Zoom, but prior to, I will go in and actually do team building exercises and trainings and things of that nature. And then organizational development for small business. So again, a lot of entrepreneurs, they do things for self, like they, they self starters, they're visionaries, they're all of those things, but then they forget that big piece of the organizational structure, right? Like when you've created your business and now you're at this, you're at this, this stopping point, you're at this brick wall and you're at this brick wall mostly because you need help. You've done everything you can do on your own and now you need to learn how to build a team, go from an entrepreneur to a leader in business, right? Now you gotta create your staffing chart your job descriptions, an intern program. You know what I'm saying? Learn how to step back and now train people to do what they need to do to lead and not look for somebody that's a you. You're not gonna get a you. You just need somebody to do an actual job description to push the, or your company forward. So those are the pieces that's missing with small businesses and sometimes just developing businesses anyway that need to go to that extra mile. So I've created the Empower Circle to do just that. So that's the element of the consulting and coaching. As it relates to me, I also do speaking and writing a book right now. And of course, the podcast will be coming soon. So I'll be doing all of those other social entrepreneur things around that. But that's what Empower Circle is. And I aspire. And did, did you move down to Atlanta, Georgia? Because you're from Jersey, right? Yeah, from Jersey. I moved there. I moved here in 2010. And did you move down to Atlanta, Georgia with this vision? Like, was this the goal? Now I came down here with a nonprofit vision. Uh, you know, I used to do music and everything. So I had an organization called I Love Arts and it was a music production program for teens, mm -hmm. music, dance, where it's almost like a reality show theme curriculum where I, they create their own record labels, they're doing their shows, they're hosting their own parties and events and, and performing and doing all of those things and teaching them the business aspect of it as well. But um, right when I moved down here, Atlanta cut the arts funding. Mm -hmm. So that's when I kind of went into the Boys and Girls Club, the nonprofit sector, and I've been doing like nonprofit work and I did royalties, my own nonprofit organization. And that kind of took me right into a midlife crisis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Most yeah. Having to deal from a, having to serve from an empty cup and all that stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. That's where I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, man. You, you pour from an empty cup and I'm like, all right, man. Something got to change, right? So I went in that midlife crisis. Man, I, I went on the lake for about, a, I, went, I booked a lake house, went in the middle of the lake for a little bit, had to process. Remember that? Remember that? I posted that? That's, that's that time. I was in the midlife crisis right there. Yeah. So I had to figure it out. Like, all right, I got it. This is what I'm going to do, right? But I slowed it down that year. I took a full-time job just to, 
you know, had to get my get my money back, <laughs> get my life back. You know what I'm saying? Get back on track. But and I went to uh, mentorcoaching.com and started taking coaching certificates. So through that year, as I was full time, I was getting my certificate from coaching. Mm-hmm. And then all right, it's on. Now it's time. Let's go. Time to go. With the empowerment circle, are you still able to give back to the youth? Do you still? Yeah, most them? definitely. So in two years, I'm going to. I'm waiting now. I'm, I want this business to succeed first before I do the youth program, but I am going to do an entrepreneur leadership program for teens. That's what's up, man. So mm-hmm. what is the ultimate goal, I, I would say, for the, for the Empower Circle? Like, is it to, like I said, to you to keep helping other businesses succeed? Like, what would you see as success for your company? A success for my company is definitely to continue to help individuals and in, in companies grow and succeed in whatever mission and vision and goals that they have. Right, like I will, I see myself traveling all around the country, all around the world, going into businesses. Yeah, you know what I mean, almost like the chef dude. Yeah, you know I mean, that chef reality show. He going to all of these different bars and restaurants and turn shit around. Who was that show? You when he going there? I forgot what it's called, but kind of like that for organizations. You know what I mean? I I'll go in, assess, do those things, do my speaking, do my trainings, turn the company around, on to the next one. Yeah, that's what's up, dude. We're going yep. to the restaurant in forty eight hours. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Walls and curse some people out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So let's talk about this April 5th. What's going on April 5th? What, what, what is that? Well, April 5th is the empowerment call. This is um this is where I basically let people know what I do. I don't think people understand truly what I do. And in the empowerment call is definitely exactly what it is to empower people, but I go deeper. Like right now, the first call is called you versus you, but it's not about the, the typical you versus you thing. Like with Empower Circle on the motivational side, the empowerment side, I, my message is not the normal message of have faith, take a risk. You feel what I'm saying? Believe in yourself. Like it's, it's a lot deeper than that when you're fighting these inevitable challenges of life and how to persevere and push through that. There are practices and things that you can be conscious and taught and tools to push through those specific things. And if those things aren't taught, that I believe in all that ain't gonna work. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I teach those tools. So the you versus you tool is something, I, I don't wanna go into it deep because I'm kind of giving it away, but right. it's not the the, the basic uh, persevere, uh, procrastination, you know what I mean? Nah, 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 we're not doing that. It's more so of the moment that you're in now and what you have to battle with, with you and your past and you that you see yourself in the future and how that fight is a constant battle in your mind and what to do to succeed and push through that fight. And what time is the call? Is the call live? 8 a.m. live. It's a Zoom link. So what it is, is all you have to do is subscribe to that link in my bio, Kofi Empower. You subscribe to that link and then I send out the Zoom. Okay, that's a bet. Yep. So you already got it started. So, so where can yep. you, that was my next answer. I mean, my next question. Where, where can they find you at on the gram, email, all that? Yeah. So on Facebook, on all social media, they can go to Empower Circle. Empowered with E D, like past tense at the end. So you do Empowered Circle on all social media platforms. On IG, my personal one is Kofi Empower. K O F I Empower. And in my bio on Kofi Empower is where you can get the uh, the subscribe link. My man, appreciate you pulling up, man. Indeed, brother. <laughs> Episode seventy one. I appreciate you popping out with me, man. Hornets. Hornets. <laughs>